What is multiple sclerosis? Mm. What is what? I don't know. I have no idea. A disease in which the immune system eats away at the protective covering of nerves. And with her, it was a slowly progressive until at the end, about two and a half years ago, she she went to bed on the June, the night of June 10th, 2012, and she could transfer herself by herself from the cart, power cart that's sitting over there, to the toilet or to the bed. And she could do that by herself. And she got up on the night on the morning of June 11th and could not. So somewhere overnight, whether it's related to the moving that she was lifting and she was trying to do while sitting in the cart or just the natural progression of the disease, she lost the ability. Fewer than 200,000 cases a year. It's always you. It's fairly common, you just don't, it's not like AIDS where everybody is trying to, all the stars are trying to raise money for AIDS research. How much did you know about multiple sclerosis oh. before you were diagnosed? Nothing. I didn't know a thing. So I was quite shocked when they said that's what my problem was. I used to do track and a lot of sports and all of a sudden I couldn't run very well. My left leg wouldn't do what it was supposed to. How old were you? Probably about 21. Let's see, I know that it's uh, kind of deliberating. Uh, well, you don't have a lot of options to do stuff. What's one thing or a couple things that has um, helped you get through any like rough spots or um, difficulties that you've had in just this whole time? Well, we have two daughters and they're really great. One lives in Colorado though, that's a bummer. And she came out and Scotty had to go somewhere so she stayed with me for a couple of days. And then our other daughter lives in Gilbert and she brings lunch over once a week. <laughs> I hate what it's done to her. Because she's always, you know, vivacious, life of the party type, and active. And we've been married about 40 years. And we dated for five years before that. And so I've kind of, I've, I've been involved, you know, for the last 45 years. It didn't really affect us growing up. She was still take us shopping, get us out of school to go shopping and lunch and things like that. So it didn't, it didn't really affect my growing up years at all. So I see that she, it's much harder obviously for her to do things. She's totally bed bound now. And um, when my girls were younger, she was just a great grandma. She'd have them all for sleepovers and they'd make special drinks that were all their own. She would spoil them way too much take them dress shopping, you know, things like that. And so really it's affected my whole family as far as my kids and seeing my other two girls who are 25 and 22 right now had the benefit of a mobile grandmother who could come and take them places and do things. And my younger two now mostly just know my mom as someone who unfortunately, and they still love her, they just think she's a great grandmother who can't get out of bed and can't do as much as, you know, as they used to be able to. There are some things I miss doing with my mom. Um, like I said, we would go shopping, we would go to lunch, we would, um, you know, she used to get me out of school early or whatever so we could do things, and now that's totally impossible. I mean, she can't do anything without my dad's help or my help. And so I still get to <clears throat> see her once a, once a week at least and, and bring her lunch, but, you know, you miss calling and saying, hey, you wanna go get lunch or whatever, and actually going to a restaurant and sitting down and and eating, and um, we used to travel a lot as a family when I was younger, and so that's 
that's hard. You know, they wanted to take all my girls to Hawaii when they graduated from high school, and it just, it wasn't possible because of, you know, her not being able to get around. Ten, she hasn't been in a car since we drove from Colorado to Arizona. And she just, this is where she spends the day. And it's, we used that, a piece of equipment back there against the wall to help lift her from the bed and place her in the cart. And that's good for a little while. I mean, she can do it for an hour or two. But then it becomes too uncomfortable. So it's not like, and we can't get her into the car because the machine, the, the, the Hoyer lift, doesn't operate efficiently enough to place her into the car. So we have to do, call dial a ride, a, a service that, that pro provides van transportation equipped for wheelchairs. If she has to go to the doctor or to the family. And so it's, uh, it's changed everything. You know, it's just everything. We, we, don't go, we can't go on vacations or we can't uh, just you know, go to a movie. You know, all these things that we used to do. We, we love the beach. We used to go over to San Diego, or we lived at the beach several times in our past. We, but that's out, and we, you know, we can't do that anymore. I can't get in the shower because I can't stand up or, you know, get from there to there. So a lady comes in and gives me a bath in bed. <laughs> and uh, so that's kind of sucks. <laughs> she uses a catheter. She has a tube from her stomach to the bag that's hidden behind there. Imagine spending a day or two straight in bed, much less two and a half years like she had, and all the things that would happen to you physically, the deterioration of your musculature. And, and so we spend most of our time here. It's an awful disease. I mean, there's worse, play, there's worse diseases to have, certainly. ALS, cancer, they're all worse, and there's poor people who have those. But this isn't much fun either. You know, because I have to help her with, with everything. I mean everything. The bedpan, the whole works. You know, it's my responsibility, which I willingly accept. But it certainly changes your lifestyle, you know, quite a bit. It really makes it quite challenging. It, uh, I'm amazed that she's retained the spirit that she has and, and the strength that she has after you know, two and a half years of being right there. Lots of people want to trade places with her for one day. You know, just spend the day in bed, not the rest of your life in bed, like, like she will have to do. How um, did being diagnosed affect you mentally? Mentally? Not, it didn't really affect me mentally. Because I think, I just don't think about it, you know, it's just, it's just better to not think about it. She didn't want to join any of the you know, MS groups, support groups, or anything because it, and I see her point, it reminds you of all of what could happen, of what was going to happen. She's naturally an optimistic person. The folks that come and visit her tell me later that she cheered them up rather than the other way around. And she just her, her whole spirit is, you know, even two and a half years later, is, is amazing. Because MS, it, it, the symptoms vary with almost every every patient. Some can, can 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 continue on with their normal schedules most of the time until they're you know fifties in their fifties or sixties, while others it attacks more aggressively earlier on. So you just have to manage it and don't let it slow you down. It, and sometimes the, the symptoms will become intense and then back off and and, and grow intense again. So it. it it's kind of a complicated thing where you just have to react to the, but you just can't sit down and give up. You know, it's just, you can fight it a little bit and, and learn to cope with, with the symptoms. And then you just react with the, with the severity of the symptoms that particular day or week. So it's, it's not like, you know, cancer where you know it's growing and it's, it's always going from bad to worse. This just uh, goes bad and Almost, you almost get to be normal again, then it uh, attacks again. It's really unpredictable. Um, so it, I, one story comes to mind that just thinking of somehow that her disease has impacted the family. <clears throat> As my niece was, she got married about two years ago in Utah and we all went except my mom couldn't come. So even my dad left just for the day 
because he she kind of left alone overnight. And um, he had gone to California one time overnight, and I went and spent the night. So that someone else has to be with her. But so that was sad that she couldn't be at my niece's wedding. With you know, we all have family pictures, and you know, grandma's not in the picture. So that's hard to have family things like that where. Um, you know, my girls have soccer games and concerts, and she used to come to those, and she can't come to those anymore. So, you know, we've got a graduation coming up here in May. She was at my 25 year old's graduation. I don't think she was at Haley's. I don't remember my 22 year old. But she'll try and come if she can, if she can get up and be like she was in her chair all day Friday getting eyeglass prescriptions. So, when she was supposed to come here Sunday, as a matter of fact, when she just called. I was up all day Friday. I just can't be up again all day. So we went there. And so if she's having a good day and we can get her up and reserve a car a day in advance, then she can be at the graduation. But she can't travel up. So be supportive. Do you know what you can. But there's no way to stop this. So you can't really tell them, we'll do this and do this to help them not get to that stage. Something I'd like to see change is I would love to see if they could, st it's the nerve endings basically from what I understand that are just done and dried up and not communicating what they need to communicate and it'd be awesome to, you know, I don't know, stem cell research would help with any of that, I don't know, but something that would help the curtail the progression of it, I guess. And then um, we, you know, my mom has a lot of stuff at home that helps her get around, like we have a Hoyer lift that we can get her into her chair and that is hard work though, especially for my dad. It's a good thing he's in such good shape because that's a, it's hard. My stepsister who lives here goes usually with me to help me take her lunch once a week and we both have to do it, get her in the hoyer and get her up to give her a haircut or, or do whatever. So just ease of movement I think would be, would be awesome. I was just going to say thank you. <laughs> well that's the truth, you keep it going. <laughs>